Hello. I'm putting this at the start of the video because I guarantee there's going to be at least one viewer searching for information about this lookout like I was and didn't find much. So here's a little information tidbit. If you're going to do the 4,000 feet or more of elevation in this lookout, no, it's all locked up and you can't camp in it. Well, we're in Idaho's Gospel Hump Wilderness for three days and two nights. Uh, goal for at least day number one is to go to the uh, Black Butte Lookout. Can't find much information about it online, but I see it marked on the map and satellite photos of it. So, I want to go check it out and we'll see what happens from there. So, uh, really beautiful start. Right away, some pretty uh, great views. This is actually a backup trip. Our first trip for this weekend, we were gonna do three days, two nights in Idaho's Rapid Rivers area. But when there's like 20 cars in the trail and still like six other cars trying to find parking spots, uh, we called it on that. <laughs>
a little bench we just hiked over somewhere around probably mile and a half two mile mark uh best wildflower display of the year so far it's a uh, really colorful and stunning Mentally no to this spot. Really beautiful view. So you can actually see the road where we started our hike from. Just a little bit behind the greenery. And uh, uh, winded through this canyon, making our way up to the ridge. Next destination is Vinegar Creek for uh, break time and topping water off. Well, we made it to the saddle, and uh, I told you that I was kind of expecting us to see the Salmon River, but we need to see a wall of one of the drainages. Country's so steep, can't even see down towards the river. We're gonna keep working our way in the direction of the camera is facing right now. And somewhere up ahead is Vinegar Creek, where we'll take a break. Well, we just had a pack off water break here at Vinegar Creek. This nice little cascade of Vinegar Creek and now looks kind of cool. So uh, we're all packed up now. Got water in our system, some snacks, and uh, let's get moving onwards to Black Butte. Well, we made it to the next saddle. Incredible view. Salmon River down there. I swing this camera this way. You'll see our target dead ahead. There is a uh, Black Butte and the lookout tower. Pretty spectacular view. Had some random larches here. Odd spot for them. Had some clouds come in. Yeah, they got a little chillier. And I'm getting tired. Not used to doing this amount of elevation gain this early in the year. But uh, might as well just hit the ground running, huh? 
Well, we made it to the junction. And this junction actually has a really sweet view. You can see how far we came up, even just from the high trail. Can't even see the canyon floor. It has to be close to 4,000 feet of gain to this thing. So Lacey's breaking trail to the summit. She's in much better shape than me. I'm kind of hitting a wall right now. So she's uh, breaking the trail right now. The snow actually isn't too bad to walk on. I fell through a few post holes, but other than that, not too bad. Well, here we are at the Blackfeet Fire Lookout. The uh, door is all screwed together, so we can't really get in it, unfortunately. I was hoping to camp up here, but we've set up back down the hill, back on that saddle, back that way. We're going to spend most of the evening up here. We got some bad clouds coming in, so hopefully it's not too bad of a ride. Got some pretty cool views from this lookout, though. Looks like we got a storm coming in. up at the uh, lookout tower uh, not much filming today kind of tent bound snowed and rained all day it is five o'clock right now uh, so I thought about filming a little uh, beer review because it kind of helped us get through this tent bound phase but uh, even though we we're tent bound all day the clouds are starting to lift it's actually getting really pretty the way a lot of the cloudscape is right now but uh yeah, I'm going to do a little beer review. Not that I'm a beer snob at all. I love Coors Light, Bud Light, all the light beers and stuff. Not one of those. <laughs> it's not a real beer. But I brought some uh, different ones than usual because... Uh, so I'll give a little review of the four beers I brought in. Uh, starting with... Uh, got Dogfish Head 60 Minute IPA. Firestone Mine Haze Double IPA. Third one I had was, you've seen in my other video, the Deschutes 
Fresh Haze IPA, another India Pale Ale. And last but not least, Sierra Nevada, Big Little Thing IPA, Pure IPA. And of those four, uh, the winner is uh, taste-wise probably actually the Sierra Nevada, Big Little Thing IPA. This one is really good. Highest alcohol percentage of all of them, two nine percent. I like the little uh, catchphrase on it: "Family owned, operated, and argued over." That's kind of cute and funny. And I won't do a third or fourth, but the second place is the Deschutes from Bend, Oregon. That was really good. But if I have to go with cover art, it's definitely the other California beer from Firestone Walker, the Mine Haze Double IP. You can't really see it, but it's a um, bear and lion, grizzly bear and a African lion and fisticuffs, which I think a grizzly bear would win. Uh, if you watch this far in the video, put in the comments what you think would win an African male lion or a full grown grizzly bear. I'd have to go with the grizzly bear. Those are some pretty tough animals. There's stories of them going through uh, brick walls and stuff, which I got a little grizzly now that I'm living in Montana. I got a uh, grizzly bear story for you guys. Uh, Pretty sure it was a grizzly bear anyway. Um, get to that in bed. Nothing too exciting. It's not a Joey level grizzly bear encounter, but it's something exciting nonetheless. Something to tell the camera while we're uh, kind of socked in up on this mountain. <laughs> Alright, so with the uh, bear story, uh, like I said, nothing too exciting. It's not a Joey level. Uh, oh, there goes all the beers. Uh, it's not a Joey level. Uh, bear story but it's a fun bear story nonetheless uh wife and i last weekend actually weather was really bad that weekend but we went out anyways just did some front country camping like out of a car or my truck anyway and uh day hiked and we actually went to the rocky mountain front for the whole weekend and did some day hikes up into the bob marshall really pretty by the way but uh, on our way back from one of our hikes in the Bob Marshall, uh, we heard an owl hooting, so we stopped to listen. And then 30, 40 feet up the hill from the trail I hear is, <laughs> like, sound like a really, a bear that was probably using the trail, stressed out, smelled us come and ran up the hill and was just waiting for us to pass. It was really thick brush, couldn't see up it. But uh, I was hearing it, and then it was like a lightning strike on the back of my spine, like all the tingling went on and stuff. I'm like, oh crap, uh, that's a pretty big bear. So uh, right away, like I don't know if Lacey picked up on it right away. I'm just right away, I'm like, all right, time to go. And <laughs> just started walking along. I didn't want to stress it out any longer. But uh, yeah, that was a pretty cool feeling. Deep breaths, you can, like feel it, like kind of like when a grouse takes off. Uh, the way its wings flap, you kind of feel it in your chest, like the breathing from that uh, bear, you can kind of feel it in your chest. That was some powerful lungs on those animals. But uh, yeah, sorry to disappoint you, but that's uh, my bear story so far. <laughs> Got the food packed up and uh, Lacey already went back down to our camp. I'm gonna head back down now. Come back up when hopefully it's a bit sunnier for sunset.
Found a nice trick to be able to stay up here and watch the clouds all dance and stuff. Apparently this uh, east side of this tower is getting none of the moisture or wind. It's still somewhat cold, but uh, at least I'm not getting hit with rain, snow, or wind. And if I want to see the cool view, I just step out over here. And there's uh, all the sunlight that's coming this way. Tomorrow is supposed to be sunny and in the 80s. So the hike out's going to be on the more rough side. Uh, don't do too well with heat, but at least it's mostly downhill. Kind of stinks that you can't uh, get in here to camp. At least it's got somewhat shelter standing up here so you could at least check out the views. I wish the weather was a bit better, it would have been a bit nicer, but not much you can do. There wasn't much info about this place. But there is info now. You cannot get into the tower to uh, camp or spend the night in it. You can only just walk around the top deck. And it's a pretty windy spot except for this side of the tower. Great views though. The mountain I'm standing on right now is casting a pretty cool shadow. All right, well, we're finishing out night number two, and we're gonna hike out tomorrow, so, Lacey, what's your favorite thing about this trip? Um, probably just the scenery and the sunset tonight. And then, what disappointed you the most? Just getting all the way up here and gaining like 4,000 feet just to find out that we weren't actually able to camp in here in the lookout. How do you feel about being tent bound all day? Mm, it was pretty rough, <laughs> not really what I'm used to, but. It is what it is. Alright, it's the morning of day three, and instead of retracing our steps, we're just going to head straight down this from Black Butte back to the trail. Looks like there's a little inversion, looks kind of cool. Already tell it's going to be a pretty hot day. <laughs> 